In part three of this tutorial series, we will create two systems that will provide visual feedback for the amount of power that the player has charged for their slide. One being a color gradient and the other being a series of flashing arrows. These methods of visual feedback give a good indication of the level of power acquired while still remaining hard for players to gauge any sort of specific metric. So now what we need to do is provide some kind of uh, visual feedback. Uh, for the player that shows them or gives them some kind of indication of uh, how much power um, they are putting into into their um, slide and the way we're going to do that is we're going to have a, a UI element and and that UI element is going to consist of like a little panel that's going to sit um, partially behind the burger sticking out and it's going to have uh, three arrows on it uh, and the arrows are going to light up in a consecutive order and the uh, the higher the power the faster the arrows are going to kind of blink um, and also we're going to we have we're going to create a color gradient for the panel that the arrows are on and the uh, the color of the panel is going to change um, depending on how much power we're putting into it and so you know we could just uh, give a numeric value for how much power they are applying but by using somewhat more obscure measurements of, um, of power how much power they're putting into a shot it just makes the game a bit more challenging. So for this, we are going to need to create our our uh, our power panel UI. So in our downloads folder, uh, we're going to where we downloaded those um, asset packs. Well, what we'll do just to uh, make this easier is we will just create a new folder we can call one of them UI and another new folder we can call that icons and when before we extract these um, zips uh, we're just going to move them into these folders because they both of those packages share the same similar or the same named folders and if you try and extract both of them in the same directory then they're going to end up merging folders it's just uh, yeah it's a bit messy so we'll just do it like this extract and extract okay so uh, from our icons go to PNG uh, white uh, two times which are like the slightly higher resolution ones uh, and in our sprites folder we are going to need uh, our arrow right PNG. Um, we're going to need a. We'll, we'll need just for the for um, later on. We'll need the uh, bars for a menu button, and we'll need a. Uh, where is it? This here it is. The star. The star. And then. Uh, from our, we don't need the icons anymore. And then from our UI, same thing, PNG. Uh, e, yeah, PNG. We uh, we will need our uh, gray panel PNG and I believe it is yep gray button 11 and gray button 12 okay and we can just select all of these Set these to uh, sprites, 
and uh, set these to no filter, no compression, and apply that. Now the uh, the first item we'll be using, uh, the first sprite we'll be using is this panel, um, and first we will need to sort out uh, the resolution of these uh, of these sprites. So first of all, I'll just show you an example of this. If we just create a canvas which just goes across the whole screen, and then in our canvas we say uh, UI uh, panel. Uh, and then uh, give it our gray panel. And we'll just make this not transparent. You can see how this panel is uh, fairly kind of uh, like a low resolution, oops, is a fairly low resolution. So what we can do is we can make this less pixelated by uh, setting our pixels per unit down to 10. Uh, and also uh, in our sprite editor, uh, need to make sure we have our uh, package for that actually because uh, we're going to need to turn this into a nine slice sprite which means that the uh, the edges will maintain their resolution and we can uh, make the um, the panel as large as we want so we need to go to our package uh, manager and just search up sprite 2d sprite and install that okay now if we go to the sprite editor we want to uh, drag these green ones and, and bring them in I'd say about five pixels in each direction. It's like a sort of like padding. And now if you apply that and go to our uh, okay. okay, there we go. I just had to uh, click set uh, native uh, native size. Yep. Yep. So now you can see, no matter how you stretch it. Um, oh wait, hold on. So that needs to be. Uh, Maybe it might be full wrecked. Is that no? Yeah, I don't, I don't know why. Oh, let me just try deleting this. Canvas UI panel. And then if we give it the yeah the panel. Ah, oh yeah, here. Yeah. So in our reference uh, pixels, 
per unit. We uh, need to set that to 15. Okay, there we go, that's better. That's what was missing. And now you can see that no matter how big or small it is, the um, as you make it bigger the uh, the UI maintains the um, the border the borders maintain their thickness and so now that that's set up we want to uh, set up our canvas this one instead of a screen space overlay canvas it's going to be a world space canvas meaning that this canvas actually is like a 2d plane that sits in the world and we can set in fact we can make uh, this canvas a child to the burger uh, may have to want we'll to unpack this for now make it a child and set the position to zero zero uh, and then the uh, canvas will need our panel with our gray panel. All right, and we can just make this like I don't know blue for now or whatever. Uh, it's a bit big at the moment, so we will set the canvas size. Let's just say for now 10 by 10 or we can just scale it with this tool. We want it to be quite small. Like that. And then for our panel, this is where we can start. Um, uh, for our panel, this is where we can start. We can increase this measurement. Uh, this the the pixels uh, per unit uh, scale um, to you know. 2000. Let's just get rid of this uh, canvas for now. Um, so we might set our main camera rotation to just one degree. And I think the uh, size could be a bit bigger. Oops. We don't want our burger to look too small. Oh, actually, actually, maybe one point six was. Yeah, actually, one point six is a good number. Yeah, that looks good to me actually. And then let's just move our burger. Uh, 
to the left. And let's just resize uh, our canvas a bit better here. You know, you want something that kind of sticks out about like that. Uh, and then when the burger falls, yeah, maybe a bit smaller, a bit lower down. Once the burger is all flat, uh, a bit higher, yeah, I think that looks pretty good to me. Let's now go ahead and put those, um, arrows uh, into our little uh, power power panel we can actually rename this now power panel and we can even call this power canvas as well if you we want to um, yep yeah. And then what we're going to do just to help with uh, managing this UI is we're going to create another panel purely, um, I'll just, we can make that completely transparent, purely just for uh, just uh, helping us kind of scale all of our uh, All of our uh, stars properly. Bring it in like that. And then bring in our anchors. Like that. Because our panel is going to have three arrows, so it's going to have three uh, image images. Uh, and then Set that to zero in there. And then our sprite is going to have the arrow sprite. And with this, we want to preserve aspect. And so for our, uh, so uh, x, x min will be zero. And then we want the first one to be 0 0.33. Because we're going to just split this into thirds. So we can call this arrow one and then duplicate. Call this arrow two. And this will our min will be 0 0.33 and our max will be 0 0.66. And zero this off. Uh, oops, I don't know what happened there. 0 0.66. Do that off, and then finally arrow three, 0 0.66, and then just one. Great. Now, now if we stretch this panel, it all kind of scales in the way that we want it to. Because ultimately, uh, in fact, I might, might bring that back here. Ultimately, uh, we're going to create an animation for our panel that it, it'll it'll uh, kind of pop out um, once the burger lands, and then uh, once we slide the burger, it will hide. Uh, itself. So you can see we have our whole canvas here. As we slide our canvas, it's hidden and then reappears. Zoop, shoop, like that. Uh, 
actually is something we can also do. Is uh, for our arrow, uh, rather than dragging the green uh, part, we can drag the whole uh, the whole thing. Oh yeah, we'll need to uh, uh, change our arrow because there's a big uh, spacing around it. Uh, we can get rid of that spacing if we change this to multiple. Apply that, and then just go into the editor. We can then just drag this around the whole thing so we're kind of like cropping uh, in a way cropping the whole arrow that should be fine uh, and then Uh, we'll need to reassign our sprites again and we'll need to take this there we go oh actually um we'll need to have a little bit of space uh, we'll have a little bit of space just for padding so that they're not right up against each other uh, and yeah, that looks pretty good actually. Yep, that's perfect. And then you can see how that hides behind and then whoop, well out to about here, behind and out. You can see how that looks in the game Whoop. cool oh and our uh, our arrows uh, will just be black but like sort of translucent and then uh, we'll go through each uh, one and make it bright like that. And we can just animate that. Um, we can animate that using code. So for our visual feedback, the first thing that we can do, which is probably the easiest for now, uh, is to uh, set the color gradient for our um, power panel and have it uh, reflect uh, our power uh, level. So in our uh, burger controller, we will need we'll need a public reference to the uh, to the actual panel so we want an image so when you uh, select image make sure you select you always select unity engine.ui not unity engine.ui elements uh, if you accidentally uh, select uh, UI elements it's going to create this uh, using statement uh, up here and then that is going to uh, clash with uh, you know any other UI um, things that you make. So if I say UI image, you know uh, uh, my image, right? And then if I just say like you know uh, public button, and I'm using the Unity uh, Unity uh, Engine UI public button, you know my button then we're going to have this error because it doesn't know which one we're trying to reference so that's why we need to make sure we get rid of that line in the using so that it is not ambiguous to uh, which um, uh, which namespace we're using 
So we don't need my button, but we do need uh, the image and we can just, we can call that image uh, power panel. And we'll also need a public gradient and we can just call that power gradient and uh, the code for this is very very straightforward uh, we'll just put it under here for now and we'll just say power um, sorry power panel dot color equals power gradient uh, dot um, evaluate because uh, evaluate is a value between 0 and 1 so we just say dist divided by max touch dist for our fraction so let's go back to our project and assign the power panel for the image and then uh, set up our gradient so for our gradient uh, we will we're gonna have uh, five different colors so you can just click down here to add a color to you know so we have uh, one two so I think we're gonna have yeah, five or well, five different. Um, I should also we're gonna have more than five. Uh, one, two, three. Yeah, so we're gonna have yeah, so we're gonna have we're gonna have six different colors, but we're gonna have five like transitions, if you want to call it that. Anyway, and so we'll just make sure these are all evenly spread apart. So they're gonna be uh, in uh, fifths. Enter. This will be 40, 60, and 80. So down here is going to be uh, the minimum power. That's going to be something like that. And you can see how that color is going to look if we just copy this hexadecimal value and go over to our power panel and just paste that value in like that. So that looks okay. That's going to be our starting value. And it's good that we apply this at the start just so it's already at the correct color uh, to begin with. And then uh, going to our Back to our uh, burger. Set the next color. Now, what we can do is uh, copy the saturation value so that they all the colors have a, the same saturation, and then we can just drag this around to change the hue. Uh, and we'll next we'll go to uh, green. Paste saturation then to yellow. Uh, then to orange. Oh, actually, no, sorry, I missed one. So we go to um, cyan. And then we go to green. And then to yellow. orange uh, and then yeah red there we go make sure the alpha is 100% I mean make full maximum alpha 
and let's save that. And that should pretty much just work as is. So let's give that a go. So maximum power. You can see down there in the bottom left in the debug log 10, down to zero minimum power. You see if I click, there's no, no power. If I bring it all the way up to 100, like to a 10, and then drag it all the way down, nothing happens. If I move it just ever so slightly, the burger moves. If I move it all the way, then the burger goes. Pretty, pretty simple. Um, I think what I'll also do is I will, I'll uh, increase the max power a little bit because it's just good to, to me make it so that, you know, if they do too much power, it can, the bug can go too far. You don't want the max power to still not be enough to send the burger uh, way off. There we go. Awesome. All right. And now we're going to implement the power arrow uh, animation. So in our script, we are going to create a private void and we can just call this power arrows or you could call it animate at power arrows or whatever or update power arrows. And in here, we're going to need uh, to keep, we're gonna to to keep track of uh, float arrow time. Uh, we don't need to specify private um, here, I don't think, because um, by default, uh, variables are uh, private with, if you don't specify. And it's just because the, we're putting this variable here, um, we could put it up here with everything else, but uh, this variable is specific just to this method. So we're just kind of uh, keeping it, keeping it here. Uh, and then we're also gonna have to keep track of the uh, arrow index, because uh, we're going to step through each uh, arrow and using an index so that we know which arrow to animate. Uh, so to which arrow to highlight and which one to, which ones to, um, to make, you know, dark. And as for properties, we'll need a, a public uh, float, uh, and the floats will be uh, min arrow speed, because we want the, uh, the arrows to still animate, um, even, even when we're not actually applying any power, you know, just very slowly. Uh, and we also need a max max arrow speed. Uh, so you could write this on two separate lines, but we are writing it um, on the same line just because it's uh, it's just, you know, they're very closely related and um, save a bit of space there. So why not? Anyway, uh, so first of all, we need to uh, keep track of, of time. Uh, so arrow time will plus equals time dot delta time. Uh, and also power arrow uh, is going to be uh, just called here in the update. Every frame. Uh, power arrows. There we go. Anyway, um, so first of all, we have to check to see if the arrow time uh, is greater than or equal to um, a certain value. So the way we are going to uh, calculate when we should change our arrows and our, our max arrow speed 
and min arrow speed is going to be calculated in terms of per second. So if our max arrow speed is 10, we want the uh, we want the arrow to change color um, 10 times per second. But we also want to account for the, um, the min arrow speed as well. So we're going to take one second because it's per second. And then we're going to divide that second and we're going to have to, uh, we have to use um, parentheses here. And we want to, uh, we want to take our min arrow speed so that we have that as a base. And then we want to get our fraction, which is distance divided by max touch distance. And then multiply that, that fraction, uh, by our max, uh, max arrow speed minus min arrow speed. So what that's doing is we are, we are subtracting our min arrow speed from the max arrow speed because we're adding it later um, here. And then we are just taking a fraction of that. So say our, say our max, let's say our max arrow speed is, um, I'll just write a comment here. So say our max, you know, say our max uh, is 10 and our min is, you know, say uh, two, then what this is going to look like is we are going to, um, our min will be two. And so if we take our max being 10 and subtract our min being two, it's going to give us eight. And if our fraction here, is you know say you're dragging your finger halfway through halfway along then it is going to be uh, a value of um, eight so this is going to be eight and then divide and multiply by 0 0.5 which is half so um, that will be a value of four but then we're going to go and then add the uh, the min arrow speed of two so they'll give us six and then we're dividing one into six equal parts. And if our, so one sixth of a second. And so then once our arrow time exceeds one sixth of a second, then we will, you know, set the next arrow color and, and shift, shift the arrow color uh, across to the next arrow and just get rid of that. So once, uh, once we have exceeded our arrow time, we can just reset that arrow time back to zero. So once our arrow time have, has exceeded uh, our, the fraction uh, required uh, for an arrow, for the, for the arrow um, colors to be updated or switched or changed, uh, we'll need to use a, we'll have to go through each, each arrow and essentially uh, make sure that we are highlighting the correct, the, the correct uh, arrow is highlighted and the other arrows are, uh, you know, darkened. Um, so for that, we will need a, a public uh, array of images. Power arrows. And we want power arrows dot length. And then because we are, we'll be keeping track of arrow index, uh, the arrow index will be the index of the arrow that should be highlighted. So if the, uh, if the, the, uh, index of this uh, for loop equals the our the at the uh, arrow index or so the index of the arrow that should be highlighted then we want to set the color uh, to be color dot white otherwise the we can just 
copy this. Otherwise, it should be, and we'll create a new color for this. And that color will just be uh, black with a uh, alpha transparency of 0 0.5, so half. And then once we've, every time we've gone through each, um, after we've you know, cycled through all the arrows, making sure we've highlighted the correct one and the other ones are grayed out. We now want to do a check and we want to check to see is is our current arrow index, so the, the, uh, the index of the arrow that needs to be highlighted, is it still less uh, than uh, power arrows dot length minus one? So this is essentially checking is the, is the current arrow index um, or because we're going to increment uh, the the arrow index like this, we'll say arrow index uh, plus plus, so add one, increment by one, and we're basically asking, hey, before we add and before we increase the index, we need to check to make sure that if we increase this index by one will that index still be within the uh, array length? Be, uh, and also remember arrays are zero based. So that's why we are subtracting by one, whereas the length is, you know, going to be, um, so a, a, an array with three objects in it, or three items is going to have an array length of three, but the index of the last element is going to be two. So it'll be zero, one, and two, but there'll be a length of three objects. That's why we need to subtract one. Um, so that's basically saying, yes, there is still another arrow in the array that needs to be cycled through, needs to be highlighted next. But if we're at the end, otherwise, just reset our arrow index back to zero. Now, if we go back to our project scene and we can set our minimum arrow speed to say something like, I don't know, maybe 1.5. So 1.5 arrows per second. So just over one arrow uh, being highlighted every second. And then let's go all the way up to 10 at the maximum. And we'll need, we have three arrows, arrow one, arrow two and arrow three. It's important that these uh, are the correct references so from left to right. You can see here, arrow one, arrow two, and arrow three. Uh, and what I'll do is uh, set this arrow back to being Uh, oh, sorry, it's not in, um, so it should be 50 like that. And uh, we should take these other ones and so yeah, it can be user uh, 50 or if you set to, um, you can do it by 255 or by decimal, uh, it's up to you. It doesn't really matter though. Uh, so if we save that, uh, and I believe if we just run that, we should be all all good. So if we just hit play, you can see the arrows are uh, cycling through next, 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 every 1.5 seconds. And then if we drag it up, it goes a lot faster, all the way down to I'm not holding on anymore. It's still still going. Right. So the last thing to do for our um, a little power arrow uh, indicator is uh, two little things. We 
We want our burger, first of all. Uh, let's just line that up. Just get it slightly out of scene. We want our burger to fall into scene. But just as like a cool, we want to create like a cool kind of animation. So ideally, when the burger, as soon as the burger like lands and, you know, hits the, hits the ground and it's all ready to go and all the toppings have also fallen and landed and everything, um, we want our arrow to appear. And then, and then, you know, we do the dragging and all of that, you know, left and right and whatever, powering up. And then as soon as we let go, uh, we want that um, power arrow panel to, to go away. And we could just enable and disable it, but I thought it would be nice to, um, I thought it would be nice to create a sort of uh, animation for that uh, and trigger that at, at the perfect timing. Uh, because I just think that that, kind of coming out like that just looks so much cooler. Uh, and also you th the thing is we want, we only want our panel to appear once the, uh, all the toppings have fully collapsed because we're kind of having to tuck our panel slightly behind the, um, our burger. But so if we if we start you know bringing this out um as the as the burger is uh before it's fully you know collapsed you know all, all of the toppings have collapsed on top of each other then we're gonna you know it's gonna kind of ruin the whole effect we're gonna be able to see clearly that it's just you know hiding behind there so there's, we're going to use a little bit of a trick and the trick for that is we are going to wait for our bun top to touch our salad and it's a bit of a funny way of doing it but I think it's kind of a fun way of approaching this and it's kind of it's intuitive in a way but it's also kind of fun I mean there, there I'm sure there are like more technical you know, proper ways of doing it, but this is just kind of, yeah, just a kind of fun, quirky way of, of, of solving this problem. So we know that the burger bun, because it is lighter and has more drag, it's going to be the last thing to, uh, to basically, uh, uh, to land. Uh, and we know that if in, in, a, in a condition where the uh, bun, the, the top bun, uh, hits the lettuce, it must mean that the whole burger is fully collapsed. 